Hey, I got a couple of examples here. Uh, again, uh, here's one where I just encourage you to work these first two, see if you can work them by yourself. Uh, so pause the video, see if you can work these first two problems, uh, see if you've got a good handle. These are just uh, these are more straightforward. They're not uh, non-constant growth problems, so they're more straightforward. See if you can work these throughout um, to, uh, to make sure you've got a good handle on it, then come back, all right? So when you come back, uh, what is the value of a stock that has been paying and is expected to continue to pay a constant dividend of $2 per year if the required return is 15%? So this is a constant dividend regime the price of a constant dividend stock is the present value of a uh, perpetuity, where we just have the first dividend divided by the rate. So here the dividend is $2, the rate is 15%, and the price of this stock should be 13.33. Okay. Now the second one says, what if the company starts increasing dividends by 3% per year beginning with the next dividend? So now we would then have a constantly growing dividend and the price of a stock with a constantly growing dividend is the present value of a growing perpetuity. And to do that, we use the dividend growth model. Next period's dividend divided by R minus G. However, we don't have next period's dividend. We're only given the last dividend, D0. So we need to calculate D1 by multiplying D0 times one plus the growth rate in the dividends. So two times one plus 0 0.03 gives me 2.06. Now I can come back and plug this into the model. Next period's dividend is $2.06. The discount rate is still 15%, the growth rate is 3%, and the value of this stock should be 1717. So here's a quick example. Suppose a firm stock is selling for $10.50. It just paid a $1 dividend and dividends are expected to grow at 5% per year. What is the required implied return? Right. So here we're trying to solve for return, and we've seen in the slides that we can rearrange the dividend growth model to solve for return so that R is equal to D1 divided by P0 plus G. Where this piece, D1 divided by P0, is called the dividend yield. And this piece, G, is called the capital gain. Right. So what is the required return? We just need to plug everything in. Right. Now, the only thing that we don't know, again, is that the uh, is D1, because all we have is that the firm just paid a $1 dividend. So we have D0. Right. So D0 equals a dollar. We need to calculate D1, and that is a dollar times one plus the growth rate of 5% and we calculate D1 to be 1.05. Now we can solve for R. R is equal to D1, 1.05, divided by the price, 1050, plus G, the growth rate, 0 0.05. And the implied return is 15%, right? where the dividend yield is D1 divided by P0, which is 10%. And the capital gains yield is G, which is just 5%. Okay, a couple more examples. Again, I encourage you to uh, stop the video, work these examples, see if you can follow along here. If you're being able to work the examples, then you're standing in good shape in this chapter uh, and, uh, and you're in good shape for the next exam. Uh, and if you're not following, then this is a good place to identify what you're not following and send me an email so you have any questions, okay? Okay, when you come back, uh, you observe a stock price of 18.75. You expect a dividend growth rate of 5%, and the most recent dividend was $1.50. What is the required return implied by the price? So this is just like the previous example where we want to solve for R. And we know that R is equal to D1 divided by P0 plus G. 
but we're not given D1. Once again, we're given the most recent dividend. We are only given D0. We need to calculate D1. I'm just gonna do it here in one step, right? D1 is equal to D0 times one plus the growth rate of 5% divided by the price 1875 plus the growth rate. And if I do our, my algebra correctly, should get 0.134 or 13.4%. Okay. Next, XYZ stock currently sells for $50 per share. The next expected annual dividend is $2 and the growth rate is 6%. What is the expected rate of return on this stock? Well, here we've had all the hard work done for us. We are already given the next dividend. So we're given D1 to be $2, the price to be $50, and the growth rate to be 6%. Again, we just need to make sure we do our algebra correctly and we get 0 0.10 or 10% for the expected rate of return. Finally, if the required rate of return on this stock were 12%, what would the stock price be and what would the dividend yield be? So this is a little bit different of a problem. It's in combination with this problem. It says, instead of the, if the actual required return of 10% of, um, of were 12%, how would that change the price? And so what we do is we come back to the price and we say, okay, the next dividend is $2. If the actual return was 12% instead of 10, growth rate still 6%, how would that affect the price? The price would change, it would be 33.33 instead of $50. And if that was the case, the dividend yield would become two divided by 33.33 or 0.06. Okay. 